What's going on, people? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay, aka Jay from Jay Medicine, aka The Real Slim Shady. Um, today, we're going to be talking about a very important topic. It's been highly requested. Um, and, and by highly requested, I mean probably like two of you told me to do this. Um, nonetheless, it's pretty important. So um, it's, it's extracurriculars, volunteering, all that jazz, what you need to get into med school, which extracurriculars are important, how to get into the programs, etc, etc. Um, before getting into the video though, I just want to address, um, I just came back from Spain, I, I told you guys I was going to go to Spain, and I also told you guys that I was going to vlog, and I did, I made a vlog. Um, on my phone, <laughs> but then I got my phone stolen from me. So it's some Spanish guy somewhere has a vlog of me just chilling in Spain, uh, going to the beaches, walking around, eating Spanish food. Um, so at least some someone gets to enjoy it. Um, but you don't, because <laughs> I got robbed. But yeah, um, yeah, it kind of sucked. But um, but it's okay. Um, I'm back, better than ever. Uh, got a brand new phone and ready to make. A new video for you guys to enjoy and learn like you have before um, yeah so let's get into it so I'm gonna break this video down into four different parts um, the first one is gonna talk about why volunteering why extracurriculars are important the second part is the different types of extracurriculars there are the third part is which extracurriculars are most useful what do med schools uh, look for what do they like what do they love um, and the last part is how to get into each type of extracurricular program, what steps you need to take um, to, you know, jump into it. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the first part of the video. Why is volunteering important? Well, we spend four years, give or take, um, of our lives in, in pre-med, pretty much just digging our faces into a book and absorbing information. Um, and we do that because we want to get good grades and we do that because we want to prove to the med school that we're smart but med schools don't really care if you're smart okay if you're smart it doesn't really matter there's a lot of smart kids out there jk if you're smart that's cool i'm proud of you um but med schools don't want to they don't want this guy okay they don't want this guy to imagine if if this guy okay if this guy was your doctor. You don't want that guy to be your doctor. Med schools don't want that guy to be in their med school. Okay, you you need to prove to the med school that you're more than just a sponge. Okay, you're more than just something that's just absorbing material, regurgitating it. And to prove that, you have to go outside and do things. Um, and when you do that, my light just went out. Um, and yes, I have a light, so. But most of you probably already X'd out of this video, but um, so I'm safe. But med schools want to know that you're committed to medicine. If they know that you're committed, it proves to them that you're more than just some guy that can just absorb information and tell it back to uh, their professor. Um, it shows that you've been in the field of medicine, and especially if you have a clinical experience, it shows that you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Because a lot of times, not a lot of times, but sometimes, People with um, a pretty vague understanding of medicine get into a med school and then they kind of realize what it's all about, what the lifestyle is like, what the stress is like, um, and they realize that it's not for them. And med schools fear that very, very much. They don't want you to be the guy or the girl that does not know what they're getting themselves into. So it, it, when you volunteer, when you have a lot of extracurriculars, uh, clinical or non-clinical, it not only proves that you're committed to medicine, it proves that you know what medicine is all about and that you won't get scared out of it and that, you know, you just have a general knowledge of what the field is like and if you're still sticking to it, if you're still applying to a medical school, it shows that you still actually want to do this. Um, so moving on to the second part of the video, what types of extracurriculars are out, uh, are out there? Um, the first one is shadowing. Uh, shadowing is simply just um, picking a doctor, following them around, seeing their day-to-day -day, uh, lifestyle, their day-to-day -day work lifestyle, uh, seeing what kind of practice uh, they they do. Um, and this could be any kind of doctor. It could be you know a family doctor. It could be a specialty, depending on what uh, what doctor you get to shadow for. Um, the second type is volunteering. Uh, now volunteering is kind of broad. Um, the more the more important ones are research and when you volunteer at a hospital 
Um, so I did not have, uh, I technically did not have a shadow experience, but I did volunteer at a research facility and I did volunteer at a hospital. So I volunteered at Inova Fairfax for patient support services and I volunteered at the NCBID in, uh, in Manassas, Virginia, um, the Bi Biomedical Research Center um, as a research assistant and I had both of those. Um, the third type of uh, extracurricular is a paid experience, okay? Um, this is anything, uh, it could be clinical, it could be somewhat clinical. Uh, my paid experiences were scribing, which is, uh, in my opinion, and uh, in my med school's opinion, my most important experience. Um, and the other thing that I had was, I was a pharmacy technician. Um, now, I know this is a little bit, like, different, but sometimes it's good to have a different experience. So as a pharmacy tech, I got to learn, you know, medication names, interactions of medications, um, how insurance works, um, what medication uh, is good for one patient, what the generic name is uh, for a brand medication, uh, that kind of stuff. So, you know, any kind of experience where you can prove to the med school that the experience helped you uh, learn medicine and it, and it helped you become more uh, adept with, uh, you know, just clinical terms um, and it made you more ready for med school. If you can prove that to them on your application, it's a good experience. Um, now, there's, there's also sports and clubs. Um, those two are you know, they're pretty self-explanatory, sports and clubs. If you get into a sport or a club, definitely very beneficial. Um, if you don't, it's not the end of the world. Um, it's good if you do though. Um, but those are, again, pretty self-explanatory. Not gonna talk about them too much. Um, so let's get into the third part of the video. Which extracurriculars are more useful or most useful? Um, which ones are less useful than the other ones? Um, I, wanna, I wanna highlight the fact that all extracurriculars are very important. Um, you can make any experience worthwhile if you put the time into it, if you put your mind into it, and if you can prove on your application that this helped you, it can be a worthwhile experience. With that being said though, in general, the more hands-on you are, or the, the closer you are to the action, the more important or the more valuable the extracurricular is. So something like a scribing experience, which for me was my best experience. It was very hands-on. It was very, not hands-on as in like I'm touching the patient because I'm not allowed to do that, um, or I wasn't allowed to do that when I was a scribe. Um, it's more just how close I am to the action. So scribing, when I scribed in the emergency room, I was literally walking into the patient's room. I was seeing everything. I was seeing the exam. I was seeing their history. I was seeing the, you know, the medications they were given, their diagnoses, their discharge, every single thing, I would see it, you know, everything that, that, that they got done, I would see it, and I was very hands-on. And not only that, but, you know, just the hours that they were working. I was working the same hours as a doctor, sometimes more. They would leave and I would sit there and finish their charts for them. Um, so, you know, this kind of experience really proved to the, the uh, medical school that, you know, I knew what I was getting myself into. I knew that these shifts were hard. I knew that, you know, there was a lot of stress involved, and I, but I knew what the reward was, and I liked the reward enough to the point where I really want to pursue this. So that was very important to them. Um, whereas compared to like other experiences, like say a pharmacy tech, I'm not really, you know, close to the action. I'm kind of just away from it. This is like outpatient, um, you know, they're just getting their medication. So it's not as important, but you know, it's still definitely a boost on your application. Uh, what you want to do is kind of have a wide variety of, of uh, extracurriculars and not only that, but you want to put in a good amount of time for each one. The rule of thumb is around six months. You want to you want to do each extracurricular for around six months, um, especially if it's like a shadowing experience. You don't want to shadow for like a week or two weeks. That doesn't really show anything. Shadow for a good like six months at least. Make sure you get to know the doctor, make sure you get to know the team that you're working with. If you're doing research, research enough to the point where you get some data and you're able to like analyze your data and present your data. And if you can, if you can get published, that's amazing. You know, if you can get published, that's great. If you're volunteering at a hospital, make sure you volunteer for a good amount of time so you know, you know, what the hospital is like and that you know that, you know, once, once you get used to the hospital, do I still want to be there? Once, you know, I'm six months in, and you know I'm walking into my shift and I and it's the same thing over and over again does that satisfaction of a patient being cured or you know me talking to the patient or me you know me helping with the team is that enough for me to stick around that's what med schools want to see they want to see your commitment so make sure that your uh, your um, time commitment is is uh, significant enough for the med school to 
to see that you actually want to do this and that it wasn't just like a one week, two week thing and that you just wanted to check something off and put it on your application. Um, the fourth part of the video is how to get into each type of extracurricular. So we know which extracurriculars are important. Um, we know what each entails, but sometimes it's pretty hard to get into an extracurricular program. Uh, a lot of people find it very hard taking that first step, going into it. Um, um, and the way you want to do it, uh, it's different for each one. So for shadowing, pretty much what you want to do is call up doctors. Okay, so if, if you know a doctor, if you, uh, you know, if you're close with a family member that's a doctor or a family member that knows a doctor, call them up. Be like, hey, you know, my name is Susie. We met two years ago at the function and I need to shadow you now, blah, blah, blah. You know, talk to them, be nice to them. If you don't know anyone, literally talk to your family doctor. If you don't have a family doctor, get a family doctor. But if you don't know anyone, just literally start, start calling people up. Call up a practice, to, um, leave them a message. Listen, my name is blah, blah, blah. I'm uh, you know, looking to get into med school. Um, I'm really interested in the type of practice that you do. I just wanna shadow you, um, you know, maybe help you out uh, if, if I can, blah, blah, blah. And if you call enough people, I promise you, someone's gonna want to, uh, want to give you that opportunity. Uh, when it comes to research, research is a little bit more tricky, okay? Research isn't something you can just walk in and someone's going to let you in because it's of, no, uh, it's of no harm to them. Research is something where the research place that you, that you want to go for, they need to know that you're smart and that you're capable and that you're committed to them. Because at the end of the day, they're, they're doing research and they need to know that you are going to help them do that research. So most of the time, there's some kind of like uh, preliminary stage where they... You know, you have to send them some kind of application or you have to send them your transcript, something like that. Um, to get into a research, I would recommend talking to an advisor because it's so different uh, for each school. For me, I just went up to my advisor. She told me that our school had a program, a semester program where I, where I could do research for a semester and get credit for it. Um, so that's what I ended up doing. Um, so I would definitely recommend talking to your advisor uh, when it comes to research. When it comes to hospitals, hospitals are usually a little bit easier to get into when it comes to volunteering. Um, if you're new to pre-med, I would start with the hospital volunteering just because it's, you know, just get it out of the way. Um, it's not, you know, I don't want to downplay it, but it's not like the best experience just because you're not that close to the action. And I'm talking about experiences like, you know, if you go up to like a hospital website and they have like, you know, volunteer at the gift shop or something like that, you know, volunteer, you know, uh, cart patients around, stuff like that. Um, that's a little bit easier to get into. All you have to do is just go on their website. Um, most hospitals have some kind of volunteering section. They have like some kind of head of volunteering. Call them, give them an email. Um, you contact enough hospitals, I'm sure you're gonna get a reply. And then um, scribing, definitely scribing. I, I, you know, I, I praise scribing. Scribing is so important. If you haven't done scribing, please do scribing. Um, I did scribing through Scribe America. Um, I know a lot of people that did scribing through a private practice or a hospital. And for those, uh, for those cases, you just have to go to the hospital website, uh, see if they have some kind of section where they have scribing. If not, just call them up or call the volunteering uh, committee and ask them if they have a scribing thing. Um, if, if there's a private clinic that you know, if there's a doctor that you know, ask them if they want to scribe. Um, if they don't, if you can't find anything like that, just go to Scribe America. Scribe America is great. You just send in an application, you pick a group of hospitals uh, that, um, that work with Scribe America. And, you know, I got an uh, interview invitation within like, I think it was like three weeks. So they train you, they do everything. Uh, and that was a great, great, great experience. Um, with that being said, you know, extracurriculars are very important. Make sure you're very committed. Your, you know, your mind is in it. You're mentally in it. But one other thing that you want to get from your extracurriculars, and this is very important, you want to get letters. Okay, letters of recommendation will creep up on you when it comes to med school application time. And you have to be very proactive about it. You have to set up a very good relationship with any team that you work with. If it's a research team, if it's uh, any kind of volunteering team, even if it's some, if you know, even if it's like a gift shop, you know, make sure you're very close with those people. Make sure you're nice to them. Make sure you make good relationships with them because at some point you're gonna want to ask them for a letter of recommendation, and that's gonna be a huge boost on on your application, especially when it comes to like scribing. When it comes to research, you definitely need some kind of letter of recommendation for them. Med schools, when, it's, you know, when they see that you worked at a place and that you got a letter, it shows not only did you just work there, 
but you were a part of the team and there were people that you know they, they were happy to have you and you know they you helped them and when you write it or when you get a letter of recommendation it proves to them at school that it wasn't just a check mark on a box on an application it was actually you being committed to something so that's very important um yeah so that's the end of my video um extracurriculars are very important again definitely do them you don't want to just be a sponge um, med schools want to see a person that's committed to medicine um, with that being said i think i'm at like 960 something subscribers now which is insane when i made my last video i had 600 something now i have 900 something and i was trying to get to a thousand so i'm like 40 something subscribers away so go ahead click on that subscribe button make like fake accounts subscribe to me um and uh and yeah definitely give me watch hours man i went on my creator studio thing they're like uh i need a, i need a thousand subscribers and 400 watch hours for me to monetize my videos man i'm trying to get famous out here so dude just like click on my video and then go like eat something you don't even have to watch it i just need your money no i'm joking i don't need your money i just need you guys to get into med school and become great successful doctors like you're meant to be. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Take care.